grab your swords for a moment, please? How many of y'all are new today? Look, are you new in Christ? The Bible says that you are new. You know, every day, every day you wake up, you wake up, it's brand new. Yesterday's gone. Hello. Yesterday be gone. Today's a new day. But what you did yesterday is waiting for you today. And what you do today is waiting for you tomorrow. <laughs> and your fight yesterday was easier than it is today. But your fight today would be easier than tomorrow. <laughs> because tomorrow's fight is going to be harder than it was today. You can figure that all out later, I guess. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Would you turn to 1 Corinthians 4? Bless your holy name, Master. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Thank you, my Lord. <clears throat> this is a teaching ministry. We teach whatever the Spirit wants. It's the school of the Spirit. You're not here to be pew sitters. You're not here to be ushers or just choirs. You're here because God is going to use you to become front runners of His return, to become warriors, to be an extension of His hand, His love, and His anointing. Amen? See, where you've been, not many people have. Hello? How many of y'all servants of Satan were? Hello? Most of us big time, man. Big time. So you know how his kingdom operates in certain areas. You know that he's a deceiver and a user and abuser. He's a, he comes to steal, kill, lie, right? Deceive. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. And it doesn't matter whether you're a believer or not. He's no respecter of person either. Of course, he's, once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he's after you. Now, he don't mind if you come to church and sit down and read your Bible. You do a couple of hymns. You do a couple of little Holy Ghost shuffles. And you sit back down and do nothing. He doesn't care how much money you make. He doesn't care about any of those things. What he cares about if you're operating in the anointing. If you're operating in the anointing, he's coming after you. Now, he may use you just because he needs to get fed. He uses humans just to get fed. Those demons need to get fed. And we become hosts of them if we allow it. That's why people begin sick and all kinds of other things begin to happen because they've opened the doors. The demonic activity, certain things are inherited and so forth. Are you with me? But he'll use you until you're used up, then he'll go to another host. Remember when the Lord removed Lucifer from the throne room of God, he took a third of the angels with him because he was in charge of praise and worship. And our two other head angels, Gabriel and Michael. So each one had a third of the angel, a third of all the angels God created. We don't know how many that is. Those are your principalities and powers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. Then there are the demons, which are offsprings of the angels that came into the flesh and had sex with women. So you've got principalities and powers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. Then you've got demons that once had a body that lusted. That's why God destroyed the earth. Because he said every thought that was within them was evil. Well, that's only because they were demon-possessed and they become demons, offsprings. And when those people died, those demons still ran, ran the earth. They roamed the earth because you can't kill the spirit, can you? It lives forever, doesn't it? So they're looking for another host. Are you with me? Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 14, would you read it with me? 1 Corinthians 4 and 14. Now, is everybody there? Good, I'll be there in a second. Hallelujah. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I what? I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Or when the gospel means message of truth. Therefore I urge you, what? Imitate me. For this reason I have sent Timothy to you. For what reason? Because Timothy imitated Paul. Everybody understand that. And who did Paul imitate? Christ. For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ or my ways in the anointing. Because the word Christ means anointed one. As I teach everywhere in every church, now some are puffed up or prideful, as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills, and I will know 
not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in what? Power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love, in spirit of gentleness? But Paul was saying, listen, imitate me because I imitate Christ. Why? Because Paul learned not only the anointing that was operating in him, but the anointing that was giving him ability to operate in the anointing. Is everybody with me? So Paul was knew, he grasped hold, he got revelation. He knew how to operate in the anointing of God. And he was telling others, he said, listen, the reason why you're not operating in the anointing of God is because you're puffed up on your knowledge. Oh, you got all this knowledge, but you don't know how to operate or know how to cooperate, hello, with the Spirit. And there's an area where you and I must continue to learn and walk in the cooperation of the character of Christ. Are you with me? And that's what we're talking about today. Operating with the character of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Romans 8. Is everybody okay today? Are you blessed? Glory to God. Operating with the character of Christ. In Romans 8, verse 12. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Romans 8, 12. How many of y'all want to operate with the character of Christ? Amen. So by operating with the character of Christ, there are his ethics. There are things about Christ that operates, that we are allowed to operate in the anointing. See, there are certain qualifications that allows you to operate in the anointing. Even the anointing of God is within you, but there's still qualifications for you to operate in the anointing. Hello? Verse 12. Is everybody there? 8.12. I'm sorry. Therefore, brethren, we are what? Debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. So if you're living in according to the flesh, you think you can operate in the anointing? No way. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Well, the anointing brings life of Christ, doesn't it? But you know what it does? It brings death to yourself. <laughs> but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. Now read this with me, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Didn't they call Jesus the Son of God? Well, don't you want to be called sons of God? How is that operated then? Operation with the character of Christ. He said those who are what? Led by the Spirit. See, if you're led by the Spirit, you're operating with the character of Christ, aren't you? See, because the more you're led by the Spirit, the more His character is expressed through you, isn't it? But the less you are cooperating with the character of Christ, the more the flesh is operating. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 16, verse 24. Something very powerful Jesus said. He said, then Jesus said to his what? What's a disciple? One who wants to learn, one who follows, right? So are you disciples of Christ? Amen. If anyone desires to come after me, or if anyone desires to cooperate with me, does everybody got this? Come on, say it with me. If anyone, Jesus said, if anyone desires to cooperate with me. Now he says it right here. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Come on, let's say it. Let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Wow. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. But whoever love, whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Find it. You know, that is very profound in that arena. Because it is so widespread. It is an eternal statement. Jesus said, listen, if you're willing to cooperate with me, in other words, you're willing to cooperate with my character and you're willing to cooperate, I'm going to allow the anointing to be on you in a way that you will operate in the anointing. He said, but the first thing that you've got to, that, that the requirement for qualification for, for you to learn how to operate in the anointing is that you must deny yourself. That is an eternal statement. And I'm not talking about future I'm talking about past, present, and future. When the Bible talks about Jesus being omnipresent, God be, it doesn't mean that he's everywhere at one time. It means he's everywhere at all time, eternal. See, the devil is not omnipresent. 
He's all over the earth, isn't he? His kingdom reigns the earth. He's all over the earth, isn't he? There's demons, there's principalities, but he's not past, present, and future. It's omnipresent. But here Jesus is speaking about something, an eternal statement that says, listen, you must deny yourself. In other words, you must deny the things of your past that are affecting you in the present. You must deny the things right now that are affecting you in the present. And you must deny yourself to continue walk in the future that he has planned for you. It was an eternal statement. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. And he says, for what profit is a man if he gains the whole world, which is a temporary place, and loses his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then, everyone say then. Then he will reward each one according to his works. Everyone wants to imitate Christ, but not deny himself. See, they want the reward now when they do a good deed. That's where people have expectations. Well, I did a good deed. I, I should be rewarded. Jesus said, no, you'll be rewarded when I come. See, people want to be rewarded right now for what's going on in their life. And then if they don't get rewarded right now, they get all fleshy. I want what I want right now. That's when you go out and you buy one of those big binkies. Stick it in their mouth. With a little rattler. <laughs> yes, sir. So everyone that wants to imitate Christ must deny himself and lose his life and not look for rewards now. Do you understand that? Stop looking for a reward every time you do something good. Come on. I mean, this is really, really important. It's really serious because we want to cooperate with the character of Christ. Well, then you got to get your eyes off yourself. Every time you look for a reward of everything you do good, you bring your eyes to you. Me. Come on. That's right. And then what does it do? It promotes pride. And pride is a personal reverence into a deadly end. Pride is nothing but pure death. That's what it waits. It is the number one open door to every demonic area there is. Pride. That's what will remove Lucifer from the throne room of God. Amen? So stop looking at rewards now. Your rewards are when he comes, aren't they? There we go. go to Matthew 6. I'll show you. I'll show you where they are, man. He deserves the glory, not you. <laughs> Remember I share with you, if you're in a discussion, you bring three eyes, you're out. <laughs> yes, but I did this. Yes, but I did that. Yes, but I, 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 I. But I'm good at this. But I know how to do this. But I'm, I'm not prideful. <laughs> that's right. I'm not prideful. That's just the truth. That's right. That's what James says. <laughs> Said. Hallelujah. But that was good. He said, and those are things that we do say sometimes. I'm not prideful. That's just the truth. And what they're doing is they're justifying what the truth is. The problem is the truth is that you got a devil. And he's called Mr. Pride. And he wants to produce offsprings. And he'll use you to do it. Because the devil uses humans to birth offsprings. Why? Because he uses you to plant corruptible seeds to produce an offspring in somebody else. Come on. You know, many of us have many children out there of Satan. The Bible says when you join yourself to a harlot, amen, when you come into agreement with something. Are you with me? So when you come into agreement with something and you act on it, how many times have you talked about somebody? The Bible says when two touch and agree, it comes to pass. Amen. The Word says when the Lord... When, when there are two of you, he's in the midst, right? Anybody that's in uh, two or more people that are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst. Well, two or more who are gathered together in the name of Satan, he's in the midst too. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they don't have the discernment. They can't understand these things. They just wing whatever they feel like. And they're led by feelings instead of truth. And those who are led by our feelings are the most dangerous people on this planet. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew 6, 19, it says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Is it warm in here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do 
not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Oh, hallelujah. Did you see what I did? I need to be rewarded right now. No, that's not cooperating with the character of Christ. Is everybody with me? Quit looking for your rewards right now of every good deed you've done. This is where you've got to trust that God sees it and you don't have to be concerned about man seeing it. Either or not, it's a promoter of pride. Many, let me tell you something. Pride comes in many forms and shapes and all kinds of areas. That's the number one most discernment of a spirit you need to have to come against is pride. Because once you've let pride in, you've let everything else in. Pride must constantly be stopped. Is everybody with me? Good. Oh, let's go a little further here. I see I got a little bit more. Go to verse 24. It says that no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in what? Cash. <laughs> you know, there's God of the world in one pocket. <laughs> And there's God of eternity. A lot of people, because it's a reward right now, like to keep serve the God in the pocket instead of wait for the reward awaiting for them. See, because if somebody has to have it now, it's pride. I need to have it now. That's why when people are worshiping, if both hands are in the pocket, they're serving the wrong God. It's time to worship the Lord. You go worship the Lord. You don't put your hands in your pocket and say, Oh, God. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Hallelujah. We serve the God who is above, not beneath. We serve the God that's out of the box, not in the pocket. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew 10. Praise your Lord. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 32. 10, 32. Hey, it's a fight. It's a fight against that demon of pride, man. Remember, you were birthed from pride. That's your inheritance of darkness. That's the character of darkness. Why? Because Satan used to be your father. And we're severing those things. In Matthew 10, 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. How are you denying him? By not cooperating with his character. You deny him. Being if I'm making decisions according to the flesh, I'm denying him? Yes. You mean if I'm making decisions according to money and, and not according to the will of God, I'm denying him? Yes. You mean because I'm making decisions according to emotions instead of truth, am I denying him? Yes! You are not cooperating with the character of Christ. Because the character of Christ, the first identical character, identifying character was to deny yourself. You make no decision that has anything to do with you. Every decision has to do with Him. Is everybody with me on that? Now look at He's going to direct you into decisions that are best for you, isn't He? How many of y'all made a wrong decision? If you didn't raise your hand, you can repent because you just made another wrong one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Jesus said, Do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I did not to come to bring peace, but a what? Sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. You notice it didn't say a flock against the pastor? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And a man's enemies will be those of his own what? Also, believe me, your enemy will be the ones that's closest to you. Why? Because something's going to happen that's going to offend you. See, the devil doesn't use the ones that are way distant. He uses the ones that are close. Because he wants to get as close as possible to you. If you're walking in the character or cooperating with the character of Christ. Hello? Did you ever get that phone call? It's just an un unexpected phone call. Hello? Yes, uh-huh. Oh, what? Uh, it's gone. You mean? Yeah. Well, uh, click. 
then you pick up the phone call and you call everybody and tell them what just happened. Did you hear what such and such did? Hurt me. Didn't reward me right now. See, your response or reaction is going to be cooperating with Christ or denying Him. Hello? Oh, good one. It's real quiet in here. Something must be happening. <laughs> and he who does not take his cross and follow me, in verse 38, follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will what? He will find it. Deny him by not imitating him or cooperating with his character. We must make a cho choice to love him more than yourself and more than others. Why do anything for such and such? Well, would you do anything for God? People are willing to do everything and anything for their children, but yet they compromise the things for God. See, even doing things for, willing to do everything for everyone else except for God is still a promotion of pride because you're expecting a reward. That's why you're doing it for what you can see and not for what you can't see. But I got bills to pay. Praise God. Who doesn't? Well, what you want to really do is get yourself out of a lot of bills. Quit borrowing money when you shouldn't. Hello. People get themselves in debt. You know, they're so busy trying to pay off bills, they can't serve God. Then they rely on how much money they make, and it's spent before they get it. See, because they're calculating how much money they can make so they can get more things because... Self and pride is so promoted, it's overtaking. Now, is that walking in the character of Christ? No. It's fact that it's denying Him. That's why the Bible says, labor on to the Lord. Too many people are laboring on to the God in the pocket instead of laboring on to the King of glory. Well, I'll only work for this much money. Well, I'll only do... Well, then who's your God? Come on. We've got to get serious about this. We've got to get serious about cooperating with the character of Christ. Because you're either imitating Him or you're denying Him. Hallelujah. Matthew 5. Matthew 5 and start at verse 1. 5, 1. And seeing the multitudes, He, Jesus, went up on a mountain. And when He was seated, His disciples came to Him. And He opened His mouth and He taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for their, theirs is the what? Kingdom of heaven. In other words, blessed are you. Who are humble. What was he expressing here? Through this whole beatitude, you know what he's doing? He's expressing his character. Blessed are the poor in spirit or, or, or those who are humble in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn or, or those who intercede for others. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek who are, who are gentle. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the who are hungry and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. That's uprightness. A desire to want to walk upright. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive or obtain mercy. That's called forgiveness. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's holiness. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called what? Sons of God. Those are bring unity. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things about you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward where? In heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Has everybody got it? It's talking about humbleness. and innocence. These are characters of Christ, aren't they? Did Jesus retali retali retaliate on anything? Did he have vengeance on anything? Was he greedy? Did he lie? Did he promote himself? Uh, let's see here. Was he offended? Was he prideful? Selfish? Wow. Like I said before, everybody walks around, well, what would Jesus do? But they really don't see it. They're still asking themselves, what would Jesus do? They see all of these things, but they're still walking around, what would Jesus do? People wear all these t-shirts and all these things. I'm telling you, they got eight gold bracelets that says, I love Jesus, but they still can't walk in the Spirit yet. They want to promote Christ, but they can't imitate Christ. That's a difference. See, because if you want to promote Christ and can't imitate Christ, then you're denying Christ. 
and you're bringing shame to his name. We must cooperate with his character. 1 John chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. 1 John 2. It's just for you. 1 John chapter 2. Praise God. In verse 3, would you read it with me, please? For whoever keeps his... Oh, now by this we know that we know him if we what? Keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word... Now, that's what he was talking about, his commandments, you understand? Because now his commandments are daily. He's not talking about the Ten Commandments. He's talking about his commandments that are daily. Daily relationship. He's, he's telling us things to do daily, isn't he? Those who are... And, and he's expressing himself also through his word, isn't he? Those who keep his word, things that he says. Remember, the word is a tutor. And the spirit is the mentor. That's why as you're being led by the spirit, you're being mentored. The word of God tutors you and the spirit of God mentors you. In verse 5, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to, also to what? Walk just as he walked. That means imitate him. Cooperate with his character. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which we have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his light. Wow. And his eyes. So here's, here, did Jesus hate anybody? The only one he hated was the devil, didn't he? He hated darkness, right? See, there are people who are still walking in an arena of hatred, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is hatred. Come on, say it with me. Unforgiveness is hatred. Now, it doesn't mean that you got to hang around with the person. Hello? There are people that have hurt you. Some of you were abused. Some of you, all kinds of things, offended, whatever it is. You must forgive. No matter what it is, you must forgive. But it doesn't mean you got to hang around with that person. Hello? You forgive and you walk away. But you must make that choice to forgive. And remember, we're not making choices in how you feel. Come on. Well, I don't feel like forgiving. It's got nothing to do with it. It's a choice. Daily, you must forgive because something usually is happening almost every single day. Go to Matthew 6, please. Matthew 6. Cooperating with the character of Christ. Did Jesus forgive? Oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, God had to first forgive us before he could ask for it. He had to forgive us before we could ask for forgiveness. Do you get it? He actually had to make the choice to forgive us before we could get forgiveness. In Matthew 6, 6. But you, when you what? Hello, it didn't say if you pray. It didn't say if. Hey, man, you, when, uh, if, if, you, if you pray. He says you, when you pray. So we know that prayer is a command. And let me tell you, if you don't have a prayer life... You don't have a life of Christ. You cannot cooperate with the character of Christ without a prayer life. And you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Oh, hallelujah. But you're not looking for it. You don't go pray to go look for the reward, do you? I hope not. You go pray. The Bible says, whatever you ask, ask in faith and be given to you. The things that you are needing are things to complement the anointing in your life. Does everybody understand it? See, God isn't going to bless you with all kinds of things if you can't handle it. When they're self-imposed blessings, they always cause you to stumble and fall. Especially if you've got a call in your life and you've, said, and you've given your life to the Lord. And you said, Lord, I, I want to serve you. And then you turn around and serve the blessings that become curses now. 
Then God moves back and you do all this work and all this label and all the material things are piling up. And let me tell you, they'll go. Because even the Lord said, he warned him in the Old Testament. He said, because you've disobeyed me, all of these blessings that were going to overtake you, now all of these curses will overtake you. He even said, you'll lose your wives and your children. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? And when you pray, verse 7, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. There's people that just go into prayer and just babble off anything. Oh, Lord. Thank you for another day. Amen. <laughs> then they come back five minutes later. Oh, Lord, thank you for another day. Amen. Yeah, I prayed twice today. No prayer. No, no, no relationship. Oh, God, please bless me. Amen. Oh, Lord, please fix what's his name or her name. Amen. Lord, I need a new car. Amen. Good relationship. Those are people that want to use God and not be used by God. See, you may start off in the right way, but once you've allowed pride in and you stop cooperating with the character of Christ, it will turn the wrong way. The first thing you, you'll do is deny Christ. How? By not cooperating with His character. By allowing pride to come in. By not forgiving. That's how the enemy gets to you, you know. The first thing he does is get to you by promotion of pride where there's unforgiveness. Once that's in, ooh, that's in. It opens the door to all kinds of things. Let's go a little further. Hallelujah. Therefore, do not be like them, he says. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you what? Ask Him. Don't be like them. In this, many, in this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven, who will hallowed be your holy name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Wow. Now, you've got to understand something. It could be the simplest thing that you think is nothing. The Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It could be the simplest thing. Somebody could have come up to you and said something. Man, what you doing there for? You could have said, oh, man, you know. And then all day long, you could be grumbling and complaining about it. You just accepted it. You've opened the door to unforgiveness. Why? Because you rejected the counsel and took it as an offense. Do you get it? You've rejected the counsel and you took it as an offense and the unforgiveness has just opened the door to you. And you didn't even realize it. And you walked around and that corruptible seed's been imparted in you. And then it, then every once in a while, it will get watered. Every time you walk by that person, it will, you feel this nasty vibe. That nasty vibe is that seed getting watered. Hello? Man, it got quiet in here. Praise God. Go to John 7. Come on, let's go do some surgery. Sure got hot in here too, I can tell you that. My battery ran out. <laughs> John 7. Glory to God. John chapter 7. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Come on, we got to know the devil's tactics. And we're going to get severed from some things today. I'm going to share with you a couple of things that are very, very important that the Spirit is really bringing us to. Because it is the simplest thing. You know, we're so accustomed to looking at the big thing. It's the simplest thing. It's, it's that little fiery dirt. It's that little corruptible seed. You know, did you ever lend somebody something and they didn't give it back? Man, did you know that I lent something? That's unforgiveness, man. They didn't give it back to me. They owe me! <laughs> and then it grows every day and the devil uses it over and over. Man, I got divorced and my wife got it all. There's people still bitter and anger over divorces when they brought it on themselves anyways. Serving other gods. Hello? Dope is a god. He's a dopey god. Hallelujah. John 7. Starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? After these things, Jesus walked, up in, in, walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. 
Now, uh, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand, and his brother, therefore, said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify of it, that its works are evil. You go up to this feast, I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. Listen, Jesus was not dumb. Hello. He used wisdom, didn't he? He knew when to go and when not to go, didn't he? Why? Because he was, a, he was following the lead of the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? Well, what did his brothers try to do? His brothers tried to promote him. Jesus didn't want to be promoted. He came to, with the message of the gospel of truth. He said it wasn't his doctrine. It was the doctrine from the Lord, wasn't it? Amen? Do you remember when the woman that um, got caught in adultery? Amen? And they all brought the woman, all the... Pharisees and Sadducees and every kind of sea. They brought the woman in front of Jesus and Jesus was standing there and they said, listen, we literally caught this woman in adultery. Man, were they all ready to condemn her. I mean, they were ready. They had their pockets filled with stones and they quoted Jesus the law, which gave a right for her to be stoned to death by the law. But Jesus said, listen, all of you pockets full of stone." If any of you have not sinned, go ahead and throw the first one. And they began to empty out their pockets. And they left. And the woman looked at Jesus like, why didn't you condemn me? In other words, you forgave me. And he says, I do forgive you. I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Hello? Why? Because something worse could come upon you. But see, Jesus forgave, didn't he? That woman took that un that that place of forgiveness and got rescued. He severed everything. Man, did he put those Pharisees and Sadducees in their place by the wisdom from above. He taught them a lesson. You don't think that affected them from that day forward? Some of them. What was he trying to do? Impart his character. Impart his character. Has everybody got that? Oh, hallelujah. Go to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. And verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one brought to him one, one who owed him ten thousand talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. Then a servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have pa patience with me. Have what? Patience with me. In other words, I'm going to pay it. Give me a break. Let me have some time. I will not stiff you. <clears throat> Let me have patience. Amen? Um, and then in verse 27. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. So were they going to pay? Yeah. And he would not but went and threw him into prison so he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that he had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged of me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the what? Let me tell you, when you do not, when you are not willing to forgive, you are turned over to tormenting spirits. Do you understand that? 
When you don't forgive, you are turned over to tormenting spirits. And he said, and his master turned, he was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my father in heaven also will do to you, each of you from, from his heart, does not forgive his brother, his trespasses. Forgive and remove the judgment. See, the debt is associated with the judgment. Do you understand that? Oh, you'll be turned over to torture or torment. Now, we understand, listen, there's nothing wrong with forgiving someone and you work out something. Amen? God is not trying to say get out of your debts or, you know, cancel debts in that area. Do you you understand it? He's not trying to say go out and borrow money and rip them off. And And he's not trying to say to you, listen, because people owe you money, but, you know, because you've made an agreement, you've come to a, come in a covenant, you borrowed some money, well, you should pay it back. Amen? What he's saying is that when there is a struggle or there's something, forgive that person. Don't hold that judgment against him. Amen? There are people still holding judgments against people because they took their pillowcase. In other words, they're still holding unforgiveness. Well, he took my blanket. Man, that's my spread, man. There are people who are still upset because somebody stole their sneakers. Won't forgive them. See, forgiveness is releasing of that judgment. So, who hurt you? Now, let me share something with you. When you allow this to happen in your life, the person that is associated with this is called a soul tie. It's called an ungodly soul tie. So, if you were a child that was abused, if somebody offended you, if you were in a divorce, if somebody did something that, you know, just hit you wrong where you're still holding a grudge? As somebody you lent money to that owes you money that hasn't paid it back and you're still holding it? Man, you need to release all of these things. There is a, a soul tie attached to that. Do you understand? And in this soul tie, it's called an ungodly soul tie that's attached to that, you are allowed to be tormented. In other words, the devil has access to you through that ungodly soul tie. So you're always being hit. Man, you don't understand how my father treated me. Yeah, I forgave him. Oh, really? Yeah, I forgave him when I was a kid and I got abused. I forgave. Now, you're still holding judgment. But you know what I'm telling you? You must. See, forgiveness is not a feeling, is it? It's a choice. Some of you still have family out there and so forth. And they're still, they say things every time you get with them. You can't be offended about it. You just must forgive them. See, because... If that offense is there, then that soul tie is there. And it's an ungodly soul tie. You must, now listen, you must make the choice to forgive. Hello? You know, I know brothers and sisters in my family, in my own family. Now listen, in my own family, I saw my mother, my mother came from 10 kids. Man, they, they bickered. They wouldn't talk to each other. Let me tell you, a merry heart brings healing. But a tormented heart brings sickness. The Bible says it dries the bones. See, so if what's happening is if you're still involved in something, I mean, sometimes these people didn't talk for years. Now, it's not about not talking. It's about not forgiving. Whether that, Listen, you're releasing yourself. If that person chooses not to forgive, so be it. But you're releasing yourself. Do you understand that? That's why the word to forgive those who persecute us, use us, speak against us, and bless them. But you must do something else. You must sever the soul tie. You must break that soul tie with each and every one of them so that the devil does not have access to you to continue to torment you. Are you with me? You must name the soul tie and break it and sever it. And then you apply the blood of Jesus because the blood is anointed. The Bible says that the devil can't prevail against the anointing, isn't it? So the blood, and the Father acknowledges the blood. So you put a bloodline between yourself and that ungodly soul type. And it's over with. You'll be removed out of torment. You'll be removed out of judgment. You'll be removed out of owing that debt. So you've got to forgive. I don't care what it is. It could be the simplest thing. And I want you to all do something. I want you to please write down Everyone that's offended you in any way, any area where there's unforgiveness, not today, but during the week, I want you to write that down. Write that name of that person. Write it. 
Forgive them and forgive them what they owe you. Release it. But you don't understand. No, you don't understand. You will be tormented if you don't. What are you doing? You're shutting the door. You must shut that door. Who cares? Why? You're walking in the character and you're cooperating with the character of who? Christ. You know, there's so many people still chasing money owed to them. Hello? Are you with me? Okay. Do you for, you got to forgive them, right? Good. Forgive and remove the judgment. As long, now, and now, we want to make restitution to things, don't we? Amen. Let me tell you, it doesn't mean that there are people that are still are, are, are holding a grudge for someone that they owe money to. Man, why won't you just let me loose of that? I mean, they're holding a grudge on that. Amen. Well, God wants you to make restitution if you want to walk in the character of, or cooperate in the character of Christ. Does everybody understand this? He doesn't want you to just go around stiffing people. Well, I'm a believer now. I can just do whatever I want. No, you can't. You want to cooperate with the character of Christ. And then don't go around and gossip and all kinds of stuff and accusation and criticism. See, that just opens the door again to unforgiveness. Especially guys that are involved in divorces and separations and women in separations and, and, and breakups and relationships and in friendships and all of these other things. Man, you just got to forgive and cut off the judgment and break that soul tie and let it go because you'll be tormented. And the, bot, the devil has a legal right, and he's a legalist. He's looking for every legal right there is to get to you. Are you okay? Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 7. You know, one of the things you got to forgive also is yourself. Because some of you start kicking yourself in the butt for what you've done. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you got to forgive yourself. Man, if I wouldn't have been so stupid. That's right, you were a bonehead. But forgive yourself. And quit bringing self-imposed curses on yourself. Because if you say you're stupid, then the spirit of stupid's going to come. <laughs> well, we got enough problems, don't we? We don't need no stupid spirit hanging around. In Matthew 7 and verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, you will be measured back to you. Ouch. And why do you look at the National Grand Forest and your... Oh. <laughs> why, why do you look at the tree trunk that's in your brother's eye, but don't look at the National Grand Forest in your own? <laughs> or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the tree trunk from your eye, and look, the National Grand Forest is in your own? <laughs> Hypocrite. <laughs> First remove the plank from your own eye. Then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So what's he saying? You get clean before you do any tell anybody about what they need to know. <laughs> well, this is cooperating with the character of Christ. Listen, there's an, there, before you aid in removing somebody else's stuff, hello, make sure your, your stuff is removed. In fact, the Bible warns us about going out and sharing about Christ with others if our stuff's not right. Calls them hypocrite. And you'll be turned over to the tormentors. Amen? Go to Romans 2. And then one more scripture. Romans chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. So, you know, some of you were offended yesterday. See, the devil wants to offend you to get you out of position. And once he can get you out of position, then you go around walking around and complaining to everybody and doing gossip and everything else. And what you're doing is you are promoting or you're producing offsprings for the devil because you're planting this corruptible seed in other people. And the blood is on your hand for every single one of them. Oh, hallelujah. You mean everything? Yeah, everything. You mean I just produced offsprings of the devil because I spoke bad about this, this, and that? You know, people don't speak bad. Listen, the only reason why people speak about others in that arena and try and condemn them, hello, is because of pride. They want to be better. Everybody makes mistakes. Now, there's nothing to talk, nothing wrong with, listen, when you're in discussion, and you're going to talk about your mistakes with someone or something so that somebody else doesn't do it. That's a different thing than, slan, uh, sl what do you call it? S slandering? I was going to say slaughtering. <laughs> <laughs> then slaughtering, you know. 
Because you want to learn by your mistakes and others. Hello? There's a difference between beating someone and killing someone with your tongue than discussing something. There's a difference. There's a difference in an area of judgment. But you first got to be able to have a pure heart. And that is happens when you forgive and release the person from the judgment. When you release the person from the judgment, then you break that soul tie and that spirit that has access to you through that soul tie, you command them to leave you. And you put a bloodline protection between yourself and that soul t- and that spirit that's associated with that soul tie. Is everybody with me? In Romans 2, in verse 1, Therefore, you are what? Come on, read it with me. Inexcusable. Come on, read it again. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you, whoever you judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Ouch. For you who judge practice the same things. Yow. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? No. But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking, hello, self-seeking, prideful, unforgiving, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Ah, I want to close it. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise you, Lord. Now, there are people who are coming up to you right now in your mind. The Holy Spirit. Start writing them down, man. Any area. I'm talking from as little as you can remember as a child all the way up. Because that ungodly soul tie still has access to you until it's been severed and the blood has been put across. Did you ever get angry and see a picture in your mind? Sometimes you see mom, dad, or somebody else. That's because it still has access to you. So you couldn't live up to expectations of somebody and you held it in you the whole time. See, you didn't call it unforgiveness, but it is. Somebody didn't do something right and you still hold something towards them. It's called unforgiveness. Especially you guys and women, you're at work and somebody doesn't do something according to the way you expected them to do it. And you said something and you walked away. Man, you need to forgive because that's opened the door. The Bible says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. Listen, the devil is sly. He wants every access to your life to put you in bondage. See, drugs, alcohol, and all the other stuff is not the problem. These are the problems. These are areas that open door. Relationships. Man, you can remember some relationships when you were younger. You can remember the first fight you got into and you never forgave that person. That first argument you got into and you never forgave that person. That first time that some, some, somebody said something to you and you took offense and never forgave that person. Hallelujah. <laughs> A little judgment back there. <laughs> first Corinthians 4. Is everybody, is everybody there? Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, being involved in, in a ministry that is dealing with people that are really broke and so forth it, it's sometimes and it's difficult and 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 as you learn in, in ministry and even in and as walking in is allowing or cooperating with the character of christ people are going to say all kinds of things about you you've got to forgive 
They're going to steal from you. They're going to lie. They're going to do all kinds of things. They're going to be your friend and shake your hand and walk away and talk all about you. They're going to do all kinds of things to condemn you. But it's not them. It's the devil. It's a demon. I see many people leave our discipleship house because of offense. But they're so easily offended because of pride. And, and in that, there's an open door somewhere in their life where they haven't forgiven someone else. And that soul tie is still attacking them. There are people who are still having dreams of individuals that are tormenting them. See, because you need to forgive, release the judgment, break that soul tie and command that spirit that's associated with that soul tie to leave you and put the blood between you. Some of y'all need to do it with your spouses, with your children, because there's an ungodly soul tie. There's a difference between a godly soul tie and an ungodly soul tie. Can you, can some, can you have a godly soul tie and an ungodly soul tie with the same person? Yes. Come on now. You need to sever from your mother, your father. All of these areas, these soul ties, you need to be severed in all these areas. Anywhere where there's offense or unforgiveness. Every area. And command that spirit that's associated with that soul tie to leave you and put the blood between you. And 1 Corinthians 4, starting at verse 1. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ. Hallelujah. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that they be found what? Faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. It's amazing how many people judge. I get letters and calls and emails when people don't like some things I say or whatever. When they call and do that, that just shows their immaturity. But they sure pretend like they're mature. But they're not cooperating with the character of Christ. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time. People judge things before they allow, you know, because they don't understand something, so they'll judge it. They don't allow it to get to where it's supposed to be. And then they bring a curse on themselves, too. Therefore judge nothing before time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, then each one's praise will come from God. And we're going to start a series on cooperating with the character of Christ. And this is just the first part. I don't know where we're going, but God does. Amen? We want to start coming to these roots, whatever it is in your life. Any, the littlest offense that you did not put the blood between that you did not forgive that you're still holding judgment that they owe you something even if they owe you an apology you've got to let it go come on if they owe you an apology you must let it go because you've opened the door you're judged amen now we're going to have communion here this morning so you can start some of this already start breaking some of the stuff start forgiving and 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 you got to seek god on this now You're going to have to seek the Lord on this to show you more. And as these things begin to come up, start writing them down so we can start breaking some of this stuff off. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for your desire to free us, especially from ourselves. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. And at this point in time, Lord, you see any of those who have stuff written down already. Lord, but we, we take authority and we forgive those who've used us, spoke against us, abused us, hurt us, offended us in every area, Lord. And we release the judgment from them. And we ask that you'll forgive them and bless them. And we sever the soul tie. We command every associated spirit with those soul ties that have infiltrated into our soul at all. We command them to leave us now in the name of Jesus. And fill us with your spirit, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. As again, we ask for your forgiveness. Seal us, Lord. Seal those spots where those demonic activities have been, where those corruptible seeds have been, Lord. Seal those spots now and fill them that have been emptied. We desire to walk and cooperate with your character. We thank you and we love you for this revelation. Let this be an impartation in each and every one of your children here. 
that they may cooperate with your character in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.